If you're interested in attending Catholic worship, come consider the 10 o'clock a.m. Mass at St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. We're located just four blocks up from Soldiers Field Road at 43 Holton Street. You can check out our website at stanthonyalston.org. That's stanthonyalston.org. And come to the 10 o'clock Mass and experience our chanted Liturgy of the Eucharist every Sunday. Let us offer our con consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day as we finish the third week of Easter. Let us be filled with your spirit and let us continue to worship you in all that we do. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. You know, I remember a long time ago, this is before I was in the seminary and I attended mass, which I used to do on a regular basis, the daily mass over at Glastonbury Abbey. And there was a new member of the community who I understand has since left, but at that point he was a deacon prior to becoming a priest. And I remember one of the other priests in the community, the Benedictine community, looked at him, you know, he he had mentioned before Mass, uh, he had mentioned during his homily that happened before Mass that this other priest had said to him, will you be able to do anything with the readings? Because the readings were very different. And sometimes you look over the readings, is is there anything I can do with those? Or what can I do? Or how can I look at that? And then there are other readings that are just filled with material that you could do, you know, many masses on just those two readings. Well, it's the latter example we have today. First of all, we have the, the famous... Um, moment when Paul is knocked off his horse and you see that whole story and there are so many even sayings coming out of this this was my Damascus moment Um, this is when I felt I was knocked off my horse other expressions come as we see at the end and then scales fell from my eyes all of which are about a sudden realization that I was wrong or whomever is talking and come to realize what was right. So that's our first reading. It's from the book of Acts and it is Acts 9, 1 through 20. And it's a story of Saul who was determined to destroy this new uh, sect coming out of Judaism. And he was determined to completely destroy. And he was on his way to Damascus when all of a sudden Christ appeared to him after he fell to the ground and there was this flash of light. And he hears the Lord saying to him, Saul, and ask him why he persecutes him. And of course, Saul responds, well, who are you? And he says, yes, I am Jesus, the one whom you are persecuting. And so it's that very moment where Saul has um, these tremendous uh, conversion experience. And he's come to realize that he was wrong in trying to stop this new sect, that in fact, this new sect was in fact, or is in fact, in that case, the way of the Lord. So it's a pretty powerful reality that we're seeing there. And we're come come to experience that this is exactly what's happening. And again, what we're seeing is this realization over and over again that this thing called um, Christianity, or at that point it was called the, the way or the new way, this new way was in fact ordained by God. And we're seeing several themes over the past several weeks for probably pretty obvious reasons why this would be the case. But again, what we're seeing is people are coming to realize that this is true. This is really something powerful from the Lord. Now, maybe one of the things I could bring up is something I bring up a lot. I actually talked about it during my Easter homily, and that is the Copernican Revolution. It took 200 years for people to fully appreciate the Copernican Revolution. If you really think about it, because remember, uh, before it was announced and it was going to be so drastic that Copernicus announced it on his deathbed, knowing that any kind of fallout that would happen, he'd never know because he was on his deathbed. So anyway, Copernicus makes this powerful announcement 
that it is the earth that revolves around the sun, not the sun around the earth. And it took 200 years for people to appreciate it. So how much more is it going to have is go is the resurrection going to take time for people to appreciate and we realize it happens generations over millennia and we're coming to realize that now because this is a powerful moment that changes everything and this is what Saul has come to realize it is a powerful moment that changes everything and he comes to realize not only is he wrong at least until his conversion but that, in fact, he is witnessing the power of God working in among the Jews to bring this powerful message of salvation to all. So it's a pretty powerful moment. And we have to realize that Saul at the time was a Pharisee. And as such, he was an intense Pharisee. He was very well learned. He was also a Roman citizen. And all of that is brought together as he seeks to persecute the church, thinking that it's also this blasphemous cult. And then once he comes to be part of the church, he is just as, um, how would you call it, just as uh, zealous for the message of the gospel. And as we learn in today's gospel, when uh Jesus is speaking to Ananias that this is the person who will bring his message, and Ananias is shocked by this. But what the Lord is using is his zealousness against Christianity to be a zealousness for Christianity. And always keep that in mind. It took 200 years for people to appreciate what we understand in kindergarten. So how much more over the millennia is it going to be a difficult time for people to fully understand what it is we truly believe? And so these are powerful moments that we're looking at here um, and realizing that this great conversion happens. In the meantime, in the first reading, now we're, or rather in the gospel reading, because that was the first reading, we're looking at the continuation of the discourse where Jesus is speaking and he talks about his his flesh being real food and his blood being real drink. Now, uh, we do understand that Catholics... Uh, realized that this is him speaking of himself, and we realized through the Last Supper that we have the body and blood of Christ at our masses. That's what we uh, embrace is that the body and blood of Christ that we receive at Mass is, in fact, the body and blood of Christ. And we draw back to this sixth chapter of John, this powerful a moment when we see this incredible uh, message that John gives and people do not understand it. And we know as we're going to see eventually that um, the people who do understand this are the apostles. They're basically the only people who understand this. And it's that point that Peter says, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Well, this also brings up a powerful reality that is part of our faith. There are certain parts of our faith we cannot fully understand because we do not have the ability to understand these elements, for they are beyond us. So, you know, the great example I like to bring around, um, which I'll be bringing around in about six weeks, is the whole understanding of the, the Trinity. Uh, three persons, one God. How do we comprehend that? Well, that's the point, that it is beyond us because it deals with a real realm that is above the human. And so the human can't fully comprehend. The human, the human can't fully understand. It's beyond us. So as Peter comes to accept that Jesus will say things that we don't fully understand in his time, 
Um, but the reason why they persist with him is because they embrace what he promises and they've seen enough of his actions to realize even if they don't understand fully what he says, they do appreciate that he is who he says he is. So that's a whole different element there. And those two things coming together reflect that first moment where the apostles had that choice of either walking away with everyone else or staying, that even though they didn't fully understand, they decided to stay with the Lord because they appreciated um, who he was, what he had to offer, and they know they knew in time they would understand, which in fact is the truth. At the same time, we see that powerful moment where unlike a wait-and-see attitude that the apostles take, it is an over, well, you could say an overnight conversion, but it's more than that. It's a, it's an a, a, instant conversion where St. Paul is confronted with the truth and realizes that he has been fighting the truth and he has to embrace the truth, which is Christ Jesus. So we see these powerful, powerful things happening in these two readings. And again, where's the first thing I went? I went to that moment when I was at Glastonbury Abbey many years ago. So remember, I've been ordained 31 years, and this is before I even entered the seminary. So it's close to 40 years ago. And there is that moment, can you do anything with those readings and readings that were not like today's and then taking what today's readings are and saying, wow, there is so much I can do with that. And I've only have about 11 minutes to do that. So I am not even going to touch the surface of what these two readings have to offer. Well, in the meantime, we are here every single Monday through Friday at midnight and three o'clock in the morning on WEZE. And don't forget, you have a standing invitation to our 10 o'clock a.m. Mass every single Sunday. So please come by and please be part of our experience at St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. In the meantime, have yourself a blessed day and we'll see you on Monday. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out catholictv.com. Remember, when you're looking for a place to attend Mass, and if you don't already attend Mass at your local parish, come to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. We're located at 43 Holton Street in Alston, just a few blocks up from Soldiers Field Road. And you can check us out, come to our 10 o'clock a.m. Mass, and come to experience our Catholic worship at St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts.